hi there friends Noreen here from organized and creative mom thanks so much for joining me today on the channel uh, today I'm playing around with one of our new punches from creative memories and you know it's been a while since I just kind of played to see what I could do and, and see what I could create and a colleague of mine from creative life scrapbooker the very talented Karen McDermott Rolf uh, recently created a layout and she just encouraged us to play play with your punches play with the embellishments all that kind of stuff so when I received this punch I thought you know what now is a great time to play and I'm actually going to be playing with the new dotted leaf circle punch and uh, it creates some beautiful circles that I'm going to show you but I'm going to play with it and see how many ways we can come up with um, to use it okay so let me just switch you over and let's start playing as you can see, the dotted leaf circle punch creates circles that are about six inches in diameter. And it's a very large punch, looks a little bit different than some of the other regular punches that would make a border or a shape. You'll notice that there's a lip at the top and the side to hold your paper in the right spot. And because it's a little bit of a different technique as well, the instructions are printed right on the box. So if you ever, you know, are wondering what to do next, just have a look on the box. I'm going to be using it with the Natural Disposition uh, Collection paper that just came out. Uh, and it's a lovely collection, as you can see, of uh, greens, pale blues, sand and brown tones, uh, lots of leaf patterns, speckled patterns. Uh, it's just a really nice neutral um, palette and neutral patterns that are going to work with so many different things. Now the dotted leaf circle punch is the third in a series of circle punches by Creative Memories. They started last year with the ornate arches punch that kind of creates almost like a doily, scalloped doily effect. This one is an advisor exclusive and they have had it in some of the promos as well, but it was very popular. So they came out with the floral circle punch, which has a really delicate um, tulip sort of uh, border around it. So that came out last spring. So this is the third of the circle punches. And as you can see, it creates kind of a geometric design. And again, it's called dotted leaves. You can see the dots and you can see the leaves, but it's a very um, stylized leaf pattern. So it's gonna be really versatile for a lot of different applications. So let me show you how to use the dotted leaf circle punch, and then we're gonna play around and see how many other ways we can use it. To use the punch, first just release the locking mechanism, make sure that punch aspect is working, and then you're gonna start with a six inch by six inch square. We're gonna start and put the corner, the top right corner, into the punch so that it's lining up with the side uh, lip as well as the back. Then we just go ahead and punch. You can see the first of our punches there. Now we're gonna rotate it, and we're gonna put that next corner back into the punch. Make sure it's lined up, punch. We're gonna rotate again, put that corner back into the punch, and one more time, rotate and punch. Now this I know looks very strange and this is the part where some people get confused. But what we have to do now is turn it over so that we can put these little tabs that are created back into that corner of the punch. So we've turned it over. Now we insert the little tabs and punch. And now you can start to see how it's going to look. And if you get too much of the kind of uh, debris that falls out. You might just have to empty it, turn it, and do all four of the tabs. Pretty, right? So again, I think that even though it's called the dotted leaf, it's very stylized. I think it's going to be easy to use. So the circle itself would be a great addition to a page. You could tuck it in behind some photos, tuck it behind, uh, you know, another piece of paper as an accent. You could create four of them on a page and back photo onto them. Lots of different ways to use it just as is on a layout. The other thing I really like to do with them when they're in this circle format is think of them as doilies. 
And if you go on Pinterest, there are a ton of doily crafts. You can just simply fold this over a little uh, treat bag. There are some origami folds that you can do with them. Uh, and any kind of doily craft that you can find, you could use one of these circles. If we go ahead though and cut it into some parts, we actually increase the, the ways that we can use it. So I'm just gonna cut one of them in half. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my two points right on my cutting line and just slice it with my 12 inch trimmer. And I think you can see how nice that would be um, tucked in behind uh, photos, down a border strip, you'd be able to get a lot of use out of that. If we go ahead and cut it again into quarters, again, just by cutting at one of the points, then these become a really nice little corner decoration. So you could take them and uh, cut them into four corners and have one each on your page as a corner embellishment. So we can make a circle, we can cut the circle in half, we can do some different things with it. Now what about making a border? Well, this particular punch is not uh, the same as some of our border, standalone border punches because it has this extra lip so the paper won't feed through but we can definitely use it to create borders, but we have to do uh, a little bit of extra steps for this. First of all, we wanna turn the punch over and look at the back of it. You can see that there's a straight edge along this side. So anytime I refer to the straight edge, that's the one I'm talking about. And then there's an angled edge here at the end of the punch, and that's what creates the circle design. I also want you to notice that there is a very sort of tiny tooth um, and that's going to be something that we're going to need to uh, keep an eye on to keep our papers straight, okay? But knowing those things, we can certainly make a border. So I have a three inch strip of the natural disposition uh, paper here, and I'm just going to uh, get out my 13 by 13 inch cutting mat and I'm going to mark six inches um, so I can start. So just lining it up there and I'm just going to mark six inches. And the reason that I want to start at six inches is because I want to have my border nice and even. So we're going to turn it to the side and we're going to think of this as a straight edge. Therefore, we're going to turn our punch over and line the pencil line up with the straight edge. We're just going to slide our paper in, look at it and line it up. Okay, and now you can see that little tooth and how it's going to basically space our paper appropriately. Make sure I've got it in the right spot and it hasn't moved. I'm gonna punch gently to hold it in place, turn it over and punch, okay? Now, when I move that, I actually see that I have that straight edge and the angled edge. So now I'm going to turn this over and now I'm going to put my straight edge of the paper into the straight edge of the punch. Okay, so again, lining it up, I'm gonna overshoot it a little bit there so you can see. And then I'm gonna pull that straight edge of the paper down to the straight edge of the punch. Punch or squeeze together gently so that it holds it in place. Turn it over and punch. So now you get the idea of how this circle punch is going to be able to create borders. Now what about these uh, angled lines? We wanna put those in next. So we flip it over and we have our angled line to the angled line. And what I've found works best is that because there's not really um, a natural point of reference, I want this angle line to just clear the first leaf. Okay, so I hope you can see that. It's just going to clear the first leaf, okay? And again, that little tooth is doing its job of holding the paper at the right spot. Squeeze gently and then punch, okay? And then I've got one more. Oh, you can see that I moved it just a little bit, unfortunately. But then we're going to put the straight edge back into the straight edge, squeeze gently and punch, okay? So unfortunately, I moved it just a little bit there, but I think you get the idea. So let's finish it off on this side. So you've got the angled edge. Let's line up the leaf just below the angled edge there. Make sure we've got it in the right spot. Squeeze gently 
and punch. And then we're gonna finish off with the straight edge. You can see the green side a little bit better in there, okay? Straight edge to the straight edge of the punch. Okay, so that's how we can create a straight border using the circle punch. So now that I've created a border on one side of a strip, I wanted to see if I could have borders, uh, the border design on both sides of a strip. So I have the three inch strip, another three inch strip here, and let's go ahead and mark it again at six inches. You can do this with a ruler, but I love the um, 13 by 13 inch cutting mat. It's just so handy and it's easy to line up. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here that we did on the straight border. I'm gonna start right in the center, straight pencil line to the straight edge of the punch. And we're just gonna go back and forth doing our angled and straight punches. Now we want to mark the other side at six inches as well. And if I had been thinking ahead, I could have drawn a line right in the center and marked both sides, but we'll just go back and do that. And we're going to repeat the process and see if we can have a border design on both sides. So pencil line to the straight edge and then just back and forth angled line to the angled edge and straight line and I think you can see that we're starting to get a really pretty design here so finish up this side Okay, so now we have a border that has a design on both sides. So I think you can see that that would be really lovely on any page. And you might even be able to put a small oval in the center there uh, using our custom cutting system. So that's another great way to create a border with the circle, dotted circle leaf punch. So next I thought I might try doing kind of an offset um, design. This one is very regular and I'm wondering if I can offset the, um, the punches to create kind of a more of a swerving sort of design. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, let me just mark here, get it in the center. I'm going to mark one side at six. I'm going to start my my border design on that side at six, but then I'm gonna mark it at nine and three on the opposite side, and that's where I'm gonna start. So I'm hoping to get a bit of an offset design. So again, pencil line, straight pencil line, we're gonna start at the straight edge of the punch. Flip it over, do another straight edge, line it up. Okay, now we have our angled lines. Put that leaf just below the angled line. Keep it nice and steady. Punch and finish off this side. Okay, oops, I went a little bit short there. Then we've got another angle cut down here. and finish off with our straight edge. Okay, now I'm hoping that when we start with these markings, we're going to get a different sort of, almost like a serpentine or a, a wavy sort of border. So again, straight pencil line onto the straight side of the punch. Let me just line it up. Can't find it here, there we go. Okay, hold it steady punch. I think this might do it. This might be pretty cool. Flip it over straight side to the straight side. Yes, that's going to be really neat. 
And now let's do some of the angles. Flip it over for a straight side. We actually only needed one of the offset markings because everything else kind of falls into place. So you can just go ahead and mark at six or, uh, sorry, three or nine. You don't need to mark at both. Okay, and then we'll just finish this one off here. Okay, so that's a really different looking sort of border. It almost has like a vine sort of feel to it. So we have a straight border. We have a double-sided border and we can also make kind of a curving border. So that's a few more ways to use our dotted leaf punch. So you might be wondering if you can use it uh, with papers that are smaller than the six inches that we started with. So I've got a five inch here, a four and a half and a four uh, inch square. And let's just see what sort of happens when we go ahead and punch them. So again, we're just gonna do the exact same thing, put them in the corner, rotate it around to all four sides. Then flip it over and punch again. So you can see that we don't have a really nice um, finished edge, but if you wanted something of that size, you could definitely take your scissors and just kind of go in and trim out any of the parts that were, you know, um, a little bit raggedy. So you could definitely get a different kind of shape with that. Let's see, um, I think we're going to have the same problem with five, but let's go ahead and try it with the four. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch the opposite corners just to see how it goes. Okay, so I've got one there. I'm going to turn it all the way around and I'm going to punch it. And I kind of think if I flip it over now and just make two more punches, I'm going to have kind of a neat shape. So let me try that and then flip it over one more time. So instead of doing all eight punches, I've only done four. And I actually come up with quite a neat little shape there. It almost looks like, you know, a tag with some little handles. So what if we did that with the five, uh, sorry, four and a half inch. Okay, let me see what am I doing here. And then I'm going to go to the opposite side. Okay, then turn it and just do two more punches. Oh, get out the extra. Okay, so again, that creates that almost like a tag punch. And if you were to layer those, that would be really pretty. That would be a nice sort of tag uh, journal box. It could be a little uh, caption, um, you know, or the foundation for an embellishment cluster. So I kind of like that, even though the, um, the five inch piece didn't work out very well. That was the four and a half and the four inch just punched on two sides. So then I started doing a little bit of kind of scrapbooker math and I thought, well, the size that they want is six inches and the punch width itself is about two and a half inches. So what if I took a piece that was two and a half by six? What could I do with that? So I decided to put the, uh, the long end in punch okay then maybe I will turn it very much like I did with this tag okay so I'm getting more of that tag shape and I'm gonna flip it over get rid of that extra okay and one more time Yes, I like that a lot. So now I have a tag, but now I could actually take that and just trim off the edge. And I would kind of have a little standalone tag. Again, 
this would be great for a little caption below a photo or as a base for an embellishment cluster. So I really like that one, even more so than this one. So another little tag shape. So next I thought I would try a card and I made a similar style of card with the floral circle punch back in the spring and I wanted to see if it would work with the dotted leaf. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of a six inch by 12 inch cardstock and I'm gonna punch both of the ends. So again, into the corner, rotate, and now I'm going to put those little tabs back into the corner of the punch, okay? And finally, the last tab, okay? And then I'm going to do that at the opposite side. So now I have this sort of uh, square with the two half circles on the end. And if I score along those lines, let me get my scoring blade, I should get a really nice gate fold card. This one's nice and easy because it's a very straight line. So I'm just gonna score right down that line, turn it over and score again, right where the circle ends from the paper. And now, I have a very pretty gatefold style card uh, that you know reminds me of almost like a, a wedding invitation, something like that. This one's a little bit longer. If you shortened up the card by maybe an inch, maybe a six inch wide by 11 inch long piece of paper, those uh, the dotted leaf would just overlap. But then you could go ahead and you know decorate it with um, a card in the center and you could see that that would be a really pretty gatefold card. So last but not least, I wanted to try my hand at creating a beautiful uh, page border where the design of the dotted leaf went all the way around the page. And I wasn't sure how to do that using this particular style of punch. So I did some kind of, you know, fooling around on scrap paper, and this is what I came up with. I'm gonna start with a 10 and a half inch square. So I've basically just cut uh, a one and a half inch strip off the side and off the bottom of a piece of this lovely natural disposition paper. And you, I've got another full size piece that I'm gonna use as the backing. So I'm just gonna set that aside. And we're gonna start in the corners. So we're just gonna take this, start it right in the corner as if we were punching on our six inch square. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it around right away so that we can finish that corner. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing on all four corners. Okay, so a punch, and then we have to flip. Okay. So we have the four corners punched, and that looks quite lovely as it is. But to finish off the rest of it, we're going to use the same technique of uh, lining up our straight edges with the back side of the punch. So we're just gonna flip over our punch. You can see that this is a straight edge, okay? So we're just gonna place the straight edge of the paper with the straight edge of the punch, squeeze to hold it in place, and punch. All right, so you can see how that continued the pattern. And now we have an angle cut. So we're going to line up that angle with the angle of our punch, just like we did for the border. Make sure all of our little debris is out of the way, okay? So angle with the angle. And we don't wanna, we have to be careful because we don't want to mess up any of the other very delicate, um, pieces we've already punched. So again, that leaf just is shy of the angle of the edge of the paper. Hold it in place and punch. So you can see that it's going to be a beautiful sort of semicircle or quarter circle design once we get all of the edges punched.
So there we have that beautiful sort of quarter circle design all the way around. I did try it kind of with a, as an experiment with an 11 inch piece of paper, but you can see that the space between the circles was quite wide and there is something that you need to cut off there just to make it sort of even. So you can definitely play around, but I really like this particular size. So there's lots of room here for some four by four inch photos. I just usually keep little scrap pieces of cardstock. Uh, cut down to the size of some standard photos so I can play around and see how it would look. So again, depending on what type of photos that you need to incorporate onto this layout, you could do four four by fours. You could do um, a couple of horizontal six by fours or even a couple of four by sixes like that. So you actually do have quite a few options for uh, using photos, even though we only started off with the uh, 10 and a half inch square. You could also take that piece that you, um, that you cut off and use it as a border across the, the middle. Or of course you can use some of the beautiful natural disposition stickers to create uh, you know, a border going across, a uh, cluster for your title and embellishments, etc. Okay, so that is a total, I think if I'm right, of 10 different ways that we can create uh, objects for our pages using this one punch. So if you were thinking that a circle punch just really wasn't that versatile, I hope you give all of these ideas a try. So I'll be sure to add some photos of the samples that we created uh, at the end of the video here along with some measurements so that you can recreate them. But again, if you thought that the circle punch was just for creating circle designs, I hope that you were pleasantly surprised. I know I was and I had a great time kind of playing around and figuring out the measurements for you. So I'll definitely have to do that more often. If you liked what you saw in today's video, be sure to give me a little thumbs up, comment, and even subscribe to the channel so that you see more of these types of videos when I put them out. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. Really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.